Hi, I'm Cece Summers, and welcome back to Lover's Trophy. Today, we're going to be hanging out with the second contestant in the world's most cheery serial killer contest, Jack. So there was a bunch of choice trees where we made one choice, but we didn't follow the other branches, so I figured we could just go back and start doing other choices that I probably won't be happy with, but we gotta do it anyways, because we only have six endings out of four kabillion that Jack has. Okay, so last time we decided to poison the oatmeal with him apparently staring directly at us as we did it. I don't know how. This man is like eight feet tall and somehow walks like a cat. Or he has cameras. I don't know. He seems to always know what we're doing at all times, so... Magic. Or cameras. But probably magic. I mean, it probably wasn't a good idea anyways, just because of the amount of poison we would have had to put into the oatmeal would have been really obvious <laughs> to even make a dent, because he's like 10 feet tall, so y y you need a lot. So I guess let's just go ahead and not poison it and see how we progress from there. All of the choices that I made up to this point are exactly the same, so it's literally just Poison or don't poison it, everything else has been the same. You decide against it. It's too obvious, right? You don't even know if the stuff can kill him or not. You close the cupboard, turning to your oatmeal instead. The only bowl you manage to find is big. Not exactly mixing bowl size, but larger than your average bowl. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, that was probably planted because he took the time to clean out the entire kitchen, like took all the knives, the forks, like everything that can be used as a weapon, but left a giant box of rat poison in his cupboard and then told us to go cook. Yeah, that was very obviously a test and I fucking failed. <laughs> I bombed the first, the first test, bombed it, but we're gonna pass this time. You think to yourself and wonder if he eats comically large bowls of cereal. Similarly to his, you use a big bowl for your own oatmeal. Part of you wishes he had some sort of fresh fruit. You find yourself sort of daydreaming, remembering when you go to a local diner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then he's looking at us. Well, look at that. Found the fixins for oatmeal. We sure did. Here's your bowl. And then we're just looking at it. He's looking at it. We switch bowls. Okay. But we didn't poison it this time. Go ahead. Taste it for me. Okay, maybe he... Maybe... He doesn't know whether we poisoned it or not. He's just testing it. Like, he's gonna make us test it no matter what because he doesn't know. He knows that there's rat poison in there, but he doesn't know if there's any in his bowl. You take a bite, shaking your head a little. It's good. He continues to stare. His silence makes you uneasy as he just watches your mouth. You awkwardly take another bite, thankful you didn't decide to poison it. He must have known someone would try that. There must be a reason why there was not a single knife, but there was the poison. An obvious trap that I ran headfirst into. As you continue eating, he sets down his bowl, not touching it. You understand what's going on, and clearly, so does he. Despite his insane delusions, he knows deep down what's going on. What's going on? We're eating oatmeal. I'm confused. You could try to kill him. Once your bowl is empty, he stands. I'm visiting my sister today. Is you're not gonna eat my oatmeal? The oatmeal that I slaved over? He takes your bowl and his own, stacking them as he heads to the kitchen. You stand awkwardly, thankful you didn't go through with it. You hear some dishes clatter as he speaks, which means I'm going to keep you in the crate while I'm gone. I know it's not ideal, but you should understand. You stare at his hardwood floors as he talks to you. Didn't we already ask about his sister, though? And why didn't he eat my oatmeal? Like, if it were poisoned, wouldn't I be getting sick by now? I mean, I don't know how rat poison works, but I feel like that's how it would work. <laughs> What's your sister's name? You could hear him pause, the clanking of dishes being moved around, stopping. June. She's technically my twin, you know. She lives far out, but I always make sure to visit her once a week so she doesn't get lonely. By the sound of his voice and your semi-understanding of his mind, you only assume he visits so much so he won't get lonely. 
he goes back to washing up the dishes before walking back out to you. She's awesome, has a little house out in the woods and everything. I live somewhere more remote like that, but I enjoy going out too much. He sort of laughs at himself as he speaks. He walks up to you. How long will you be gone? He looks at you sadly before fixing his expression. I should only be gone a couple hours. Until then, you'll be good and wait for me, right? I mean, I'm gonna be in a damn cage, so... He scoots up, holding your face with a large hand. You nod, and he guides you back into the cage. You watch as he shuts and locks it. He sort of leans down, looking at you playfully. Maybe I'll bring us some takeout. And before I forget... He turns on the TV. Yep. Alright. Well, see ya. Why is he slamming the door? Relax. Aw, oh, man, we still got that damn Andy. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm wondering... I'm not wondering. I know what's going to happen. But there's a choice where you can poison the oatmeal and then decide to eat it. And I'm wondering if there's... If that's just going to lead to our untimely death or if there's a way that we can, like, throw up, get rid of it, have him eat it. I don't know. It doesn't seem like he's going to eat it either way. But that's probably an ending that we can get, so let's just get it out of the way. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a big old bite of this oatmeal. Arr. You slowly bring the spoon to your mouth. It's wavering as you take a bite. I guess it's not like the movies. You chew cautiously, the oatmeal feeling grainy and tasting bitter. See, it wouldn't have been masked. Your instinct is to throw up. Even if he would have eaten it, he would have known instantly. Mmm. He nods a little. Now swallow. You try not to look as freaked out as you are as you swallow cautiously. Oh shit. He just... stares. Good girl. That wasn't so hard now, was it? He waits for you to continue. Begrudgingly, you do, taking bite after bite. With each one, his eyes follow the spoon. It feels like it's been hours when you get about halfway done. You feel warm and sweaty. He grabs the bowl from you. That's good enough. Get in the cage. Despite everything, his delusions and projections, he knows deep down what's going on. It's clear to both of you. You turn, easily threatened as you get into the cage. He pushes you in, and then shuts the door. Alright, then he leaves to his sister's house as we're dying of poison. <laughs> Remember, Cece, your actions have consequences. He turns away, heading to the door. He slams it shut. When he's finally gone, you hiccup. You feel like you're going to puke. You're sweating like a pig, and you're starting to gain a pounding headache. Why did you do that? You groan, curling up in the cage as you lie there and suffer. You should have never poisoned the oatmeal. An hour passes and you're still in agony. You find it hard to move. It's so quiet. You're all alone, so you take a moment and cry. You're all alone. Dying. You don't want to even think of the mess as your stomach burns. Tears gush on your face and all you can do is mutter. I... I'm sorry, I'll be good. But it's too late. Because you poisoned the oatmeal. Yeah, that, that played out exactly how I thought it would. <laughs> Alright, so we ignored him. We yelled at him. The only thing left to do is to be nasty. In a way, the mood is set. And you do want to get out of this cage. Plus, he's sort of grown on you. Like cancer. In some sick way, his tone makes you excited. Of course it did. I'd do anything. Your tone is what makes him so delighted. Oh, really? Anything? Apparently. He pulls you out of the cage, hoisting you up against his chest. First thing he does is sort of admire you. Anything, huh? That's what I said. He retrieves something from his pocket, holding your wrist behind you as he pushes. A knife blade? Right through the tape, he puts the knife back into his pocket, ripping the tape off your wrists. Then he tosses you onto the sofa, causing you to bounce a little on impact. So we know he has a knife in his pocket. 
maybe that could come into play. We can like take it out of his pocket and then right to the jugular. I keep I keep aiming for just really irrelevant body parts. <laughs> Going for the neck, maybe an eyeball, like something squishy, not a bicep or a peck. It smells a little like cigarette smoke and weed. Maybe some sort of body spray too. Ew. You watch as he pulls his shirt off. Okay. Clearly the kind of guy who doesn't like much restriction. What does that mean? You sort of flinch, but he clearly isn't done. Oh god. Oh god! Why? <laughs> then he gets on top of you with ease pinning you beneath him. You know, God, I've been imagining this moment since I laid eyes on you. You know, his teeth just separated. He had all of his teeth were touching and then they just separated. Maybe, I mean, I know a good dentist. I could refer him. Maybe get like a future discount. He reaches down, grabbing your thighs. You shudder, realizing what you got yourself into. You're so perfect for me. His hand moves, one holding himself over you while the other snakes up your shirt. Uh-oh. He leans down, whispering in your ear. I like these two. <laughs> God. He grabs the hem of your shirt, pulling it up to reveal them. Hey. Oh, God. He sort of laughs, a little giddy as he gawks at you. You feel so strange like this. You go to cover up, but he grabs your hand. Oh my god. What do you think you're doing? You gulp. You forgot for a second that this could be your ticket out of here. You can't indulge. This is serious, right? His hand moves up, grabbing your collar. Wait. You have no time to react before he rips your shirt, tearing it along the neck hole and downward. That is so unnecessary. <laughs> All right, Hulk Hogan. You whine, but he laughs again. You can feel his chest rumble. Cece? He tosses the ripped fabric right off of you onto the floor. Much better. You feel as he finally lets go of you, hands sliding down your stomach to naughty places. It tickles, but you don't feel like laughing. Your breath hitches as he grabs your belt, giving a little tug up. Uh, long story short, we're getting into it. <laughs> oh god, what is that face? <laughs> well, that's finally over. <laughs> he stares in awe as he pulls his pants back up. You're fucking perfect. Okay. <laughs> his voice is almost like a growl, making you feel weird. He looks from you to the cage, as if deciding something. Please don't put me back in there. Hey, you said I could get out of the cage. Come on. You see his expression sort of soften. He reaches down, picking you up and taking you back over to it. He pushes you back in, shutting the gate behind you. God damn it. Back in the cage is so much different when you're naked. God damn it, he didn't even let me get dressed. Just shove me in there naked. This goddamn liar. You shiver. Hey, I thought that meant I wasn't going to get locked in here. He shrugs, giving an apologetic smile. Well, I promise I'll make it better. He turns, disappearing a moment down the hall. What the fuck? Did any of that mean anything? No, he's a crazy serial killer. <laughs> he comes back with a blanket in hand and a pillow. Here. Thanks. He opens the cage only to throw in a blanket and pillow. Better than nothing, right? Thanks. Though you don't sound very thankful. I'll see you in the morning, all right? You keep staring at the cage floor wrapped up in the blankets. Then he turns off the lights. The idea of sleeping here hurts. You'd much rather be at home. At home. In your own home. Not in his bed. At home. Wait. 
Your hands are free. Oh, that's right. He didn't replace the tape. Let's get the fuck out of here. At your newfound freedom, you quickly attempt to escape the crate. You stick your fingers through the holes, attempting to fiddle with a padlock. But you find that you're struggling to... Maybe if you just... Shove your hand through the bar! You shove hard, your hand slipping between the bars. Oh, shit. Your wrist is pinched against the bars, but you just continue to try and get the padlock off somehow. You feel a bead of sweat roll down your forehead from the intense feeling that you might escape. After a few moments of trying, you realize the attempt is useless. And now your hand is stuck. How will you get it out of the bars? You try to pull it first, but it shakes the cage. That's a bit too loud. You shiver, reaching slowly with your free hand, trying to pull the bar so you can pull your hand out. It doesn't seem to work, your wrist starting to turn red from the pressure. Shit. You gulp, starting to panic. How the fuck do you get out? Your arm up and twisted strangely? It's extremely uncomfortable. Fuck it. You pull hard, and with a strange rattle, your wrist is freed from the bars. Oh, fuck. You clutch it to your chest quickly. It hurts. You curl up, letting out a small breath of pain. You must have dislocated it or something. Great. <laughs> what a mistake. You need some sleep. Okay. Well, uh-oh. Well, if we take his hand, he's going to pull on our wrist, and then we're fucked, right? So, well, maybe we can do it with the other hand? Uh-oh. No, I was a dumbass and gave him my broken hand. You reach out for him and he takes your hand, pulling to help you out. His eyes widen. He pulls you close, holding up your hand. He seems to examine it, noticing a large, dark bruise. You wince at his grip. How did this get here? Uh, tell him he did it. You did it to me, man, yesterday. He kept grabbing at me. This is your fault. <laughs> you did this to me. You see his lips twitch. No, I didn't. He seems to be scrambling for thought, as if he did do it, when you pinned me on the couch. No. He grips your hand. It hurts. Nah, totally you, man. So you. Yeah. You did. You gulp. You've never seen him look so angry. I didn't do this to you. You did it because you're a sick fucking monster. Before you can finish, he tugs you. His grip is tight on your wrist as he tugs, leading you down the hall. Where are we going? He's quiet, and all you can hear are his stomping boots as he ends up down his hall with you, opening the back door. God damn it, he's gonna throw us in the body pit. Get a new thing, man. Get a new thing. The body pit, getting old. It's, it's played out. It's played out. Get a new thing. The bright light hits your eyes first. Then it all registers. You're nude, embarrassed as he shoves you. Your bare feet are strange against the concrete floor. In the blinding light, he stays behind you. I don't mean to hurt you. Is he crying? His voice wavers a little and you don't seem to understand. You attempt to turn around, but his hands are firm on your shoulders. I don't want to hurt you. But the damage is done, right? So let me get this straight. <laughs> He's throwing us in the body pile because he thinks he bruised us. So because he fucked up, we have to be thrown in the body pile. Sound logic there, Jack. Um, let's just go with the death option, right? <laughs> like, fuck, fuck off. I'm fine. We're fine. Let me go. We're good. Don't put me in the body pile. You stop it right now. No, no, no. Please wait. You don't know what he plans to do, but he's talking to you as if you're broken. Maybe this is for the best if I keep hurting you, right? He's fucking insane. Delusional. You realize in a strange way, you did cause this. No. Then he picks you up, walking to a strange pallet and tarp in the backyard. We had no hand in this. Absolutely not. At no point did we say, hey Jack, throw us in the body pit. That would have that would have been leading to this. That would have led us to this. Don't don't sit there and 
and victim blame yourself, ma'am. You squirm, but he doesn't seem to budge. He holds you with a strong arm, the other lifting it. The smell is what hits you first. You let out a shrill scream, which results in him clamping his large hand over your mouth. It reminds you of when you took his hand earlier. Then, he pushes you. You fall down into the pit. It's disgusting, and in the little light you have, you see the remains of many people in various states of decay. I'm sorry, Cece, I don't want to hurt you again. Maybe we need a break, right? Like my other exes. They also got hurt. He seems to sigh as he goes to close the tarp and pallet. Please, Jack, don't leave me down here. You're starting to realize you're going to die down here. You start to scream and sob, which only causes his hand to waver, slamming the pallet on you. You're left in the dark. That's fucked. That's fucked up, man. You did this to me. I'm not the one that deserves to be in the body pit, man. Come on. Okay, so I decided this time... Still stuck the hand through the bars, right? Because it's a solid, sound decision. Great decision. I'm sticking by it. Um, but instead of taking his hand, we're just gonna help ourselves out of the cage, which is gonna lose us some points, but maybe we can, like, hide it and see how long we can go with hiding our wrist. <laughs> you ignore his hand, managing your way out. The clothes are sloppily folded. Yep. We put them on. Oh! We can go into the kitchen with him. Let's do it! You aren't sure what it is but you decide to follow him instead. You enter the kitchen, watching as he seems to be preparing two large bowls of cereal. It's the sweet kind, sort of stuff that'll rot your teeth out. He's humming some pop song you can barely remember. He finally notices you, turning to face you. Hey! He looks you over, turning his head a little. What's wrong? You aren't even sure why you came in here. He watches you with kind eyes, a soft, concerned expression, despite the ever-constant smile. Um, We gotta get the points back from not taking his hand. Do you need any help? With breakfast? No, I'm fine, love. You both sort of look at each other. Like some sort of fucked up staring contest. He looks over you. What is he thinking? He looks away, putting something back into the fridge. Then he walks up to you. He leans so he's eye level with you. A strange little smile is playing on his lips. You've come to know this as his thinking face. You're cute, Cece, thanks. But... He reaches out, giving your cheek a soft squeeze before standing straight. I like when you're like this, all sweet. He sort of laughs really reminds me that this was a good decision. He offers you a bowl of cereal. Your stomach growls. Go to the living room with this, I'll sit with you. You listen to him going into the living room with your bowl. You aren't sure what to do. You sit down waiting for him to accompany you. He comes up a bowl in his hand as he sits. You watch him as he takes the first bite. Okay. So far, so good. We're, we're, we're managing to hide the, the fucked up wrist pretty successfully. So we'll ask about his sister. We'll, we'll stay out. That's fine. Let's get you in the cage, okay? <gasps> or maybe... Maybe he'll let us stay out of the cage. Let's try it this time. Actually, go back. You realize begging like this isn't going to work. He thinks you like him back. You decide to switch up your pitch. I could get the dishes done, of course, maybe some laundry. I can't help out around here if I'm stuck in the cage, right? <sighs> he didn't kidnap a mom. He kidnapped a girlfriend. If he if that's all he wanted, he could have just rented a maid and a sex worker. I don't know. <laughs> he stares a little. You're right. I'm trusting you, all right? He walks up, giving you a small kiss on the cheek. Be good, okay? Okay, so we... <laughs> we're... We're out of the cage. 
but our sanity is very low. So I'm worried we're gonna be like, maybe we shouldn't leave, maybe we should stay here forever. He's so great. He heads out the front door the way he shuts it shaking the house. Whoops. He heads out the front door the way he shuts it shaking the house. You stand awkwardly. What do you do? Uh, <laughs> if we run away right now, <laughs> he's gonna be right outside the fucking door. Because this man loves to set traps. He loves to, like, have his little gotcha moments. This is absolutely going to be one of them. Let's just get it out of the way. Let's just get it out of the way. Because we know we're gonna die. He's gonna, he's gonna throw us in the body pit. Because that's all he knows how to do. <laughs> and then we can go back and look around the house. You run towards the door he just left from. You pause, heart racing if you wonder if he's left yet. You decide to wait, giving a bit of time before you leave. You take a seat on the couch in his usual spot. The cushion even has a little concave spot where he sits. You wait for an hour. It feels like the longest hour of your life. Then carefully you walk up, unlocking the door. He is absolutely still there. You head out to the front yard. The light is bright and at first burns your eyes. Could have gone out the back. I would have gone out the back, climbed the fence. I think he had a chain link fence. But it's freedom. You're barefoot and tired from the cage. You run as fast as your legs will take you. Your feet smack against the asphalt and the sky turns cloudy and gray. Your feet carry you as your mind races. It starts to rain, but it feels like heaven. You're free. Oh shit, we actually made it out. Oh my God, I thought he was still just gonna be sitting on the porch fucking waiting for us to run out. Yes, yes, you did it, yes. <laughs> All right, so this time, instead of running away, we're gonna look around the house and just be like, wow, there's a bunch of trash and garbage everywhere. Interesting. <laughs> you decide to look around the small house. Firstly, you look around the living room again. Then you look around the kitchen. Then his bedroom. As you're walking, the floorboards squeak beneath the carpet. You dig around, snooping as you look for anything that could help you. Then you find it in his dresser. A gun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you pick it up. Your heart beats. It's really heavy, so it must be loaded, right? You look around before hiding it in your waistband. You continue around exploring the house before deciding what to do. When you're back in the living room, you take a seat on the couch. What to do? You turn on the TV, flipping through some channels. You wonder what sort of cable box this is. Some of the shows seem perfectly normal. Others are just vile and poorly put together. Some of the stuff you see, you convince yourself it's just a horror movie playing. As you flick around, you land on some Hallmark movie, not in English. You also notice he uses English subtitles. You wonder why. Won't matter. You hear him fiddle with the lock before opening the door. You watch, hand holding the gun. He looks at you. What you doing? Get a little excited? You notice with how your hand is in your pants, it looks sort of strange. You whip out the gun, quick to aim it at him. His smile drops, but it's a delayed reaction, as if he had to put some thought into it. Did we not check to see if it's loaded? Did we not check to see if the safety is on? He knows it's not loaded. He must keep the bullets somewhere else. Maybe with him. I don't know. God damn it. <laughs> what are you doing, sweetheart? You gulp. Your finger slams the trigger, firing the gun without a second thought. It hits him in the chest. Oh, shit. I didn't think there was bullets in there. Wow. I... I didn't... He coughs. I didn't expect you to do that. He sort of just stares at you. Don't you love me? <laughs> no. He's crying. Or laughing. You can't really tell as he sinks to his knees. Then collapses on the floor. He's still breathing. But a large puddle of blood begins to bloom. 
He's going to die. You shoot again. You won't let him live. Nope. One shot, two shot, three shots, four shots. All I hear is gunshots. This is where the fun stops. Bodies drop, hit the floor, music's off, party stops. Everybody hit the door. Somebody's licking shots off. All right, I guess we'll be good this time. You have to be a good girl, right? You wouldn't want to disappoint him. What the fuck? Ugh, yeah, it is gone. We are done for. <laughs> you shake your head. There's no way. He's getting to you, that's all. You're done exploring. You leave the gun, heading back into the living room. Your legs feel so nice when they aren't cramped up in that cage. You collapse on his sofa, feeling sort of exhausted. Maybe you should get some sleep. You remember what you told him, though. It's too late. You're out like a light. When you wake up, you find a warm body next to you. Jack is also asleep, arm curled around you. It's comforting. You snuggle closer without a second thought, falling asleep in his arms. Yeah, he never knew we tried to escape, I guess. Or he never knew we found the gun. I don't know. Either way, I like the other ending better. <laughs> I'm going to do this option where we take his hand, he finds out that we're bruised. I'm still going to accuse him of doing it, but as he's dragging us out to the body pit, um, there was a choice to like console him. So I'm going to try to do that, see if that makes a difference. And then we're going to take his hands and then be honest and see if that makes a difference. It's your fault, you jerk. But it's okay, it's fine though. <laughs> you turn around, he seems to fight you, but it isn't strong-willed. He looks at you, face dry. He wasn't crying. He's smiling, laughing, but his eyes give away his sadness. You reach up, your hands shaking a little as you clutch his face. I'm sorry, I don't know what got over me. Your words are surprisingly tender, even for yourself. You didn't hurt me, I promise. But your hand, you have to live. He clearly didn't hurt you, right? Right? He wants to take care of you. Oh God. <laughs> he just loves in a weird way. <laughs> I mean, that's, one way to describe it. You convince yourself this, and it seems you've finally lost grip of your sanity. You move closer, engulfed by a strong hug. You're done fighting it. Well, at least we lived, I guess. Okay, so this time we're gonna be honest. Homie, I was trying to escape, and I got my hand caught in the bars. All right. Sorry about you. Oh. Um, well, I got my arm stuck in the cage, and when I pulled it out, I guess I managed to sprain it. Well, we'll have to figure it out together, yeah? He's gonna cut it off, I swear to God. It looks like just a sprain, which means there's not much we can do. My dad would have just told me to rub some dirt on it. He sort of laughs a little, letting go of your hand. You sigh in relief. I was going to have you help me make breakfast, but with your hand like that, it would just be silly. You get dressed, I'll make us something to eat. You feel strange with his pet names. Why did you like that? I don't. <laughs> he disappears into the kitchen, leaving you alone in the living room. Is he gonna rat poison us? The clothes are sloppily folded. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So we can still go into the kitchen but we can't help with anything because we have a dumb hand. And he's like, nah, we're good. Um, how long are you gonna be gone, homie? So I guess it's just the same. Yeah, because if we don't, because I bet if we stay, if we, <laughs> wow, cannot talk. If we, go back in the cage, then I think it's just gonna be, he comes back and then we have that ending where we're just like, oh, okay, yay, yep. <laughs> okay, well, I think we got everything we needed out of that. 
Okay, so we're not gonna try to shove the hand through the bars and see if there's any other ending. I feel like we might have exhausted everything from here on out. But I wanted to see anyways. <laughs> Who knows what would happen if you shoved your hand into the bars. You scoot back, wrapping yourself in the blankets before deciding to get some shut-eye. There's no way you're getting out of here using brute force. You need some sleep. Yeah. All right, and then we're just cooking. Um, every time that we've done this, I said confident, but I guess we'll just try the other option. Are you sure, Jack? You have a bad feeling about this. Though, maybe you'll be able to find some sort of weapon. Yep, you can figure it out. I have some stuff in the fridge and cupboards. He pats your shoulder, squeezing softly before bending down. He kisses your cheek. Ew. It's surprisingly soft. You melt a little at the light touch and he walks away. He sits down in the living room outside your view. Okay, so we're gonna cook some fucking oatmeal. And then I guess we're not gonna eat it or decide to poison it because he's not gonna eat the oatmeal either way. Um, I guess we'll just keep quiet this time. He walks up to you. And then we just ask him how long he'll be gone. Okay. Damn it! <laughs> okay, so I went back to the very, very beginning, seeing if there's any choices that we made here that I can change to kind of change some of the choices later. And see if that has a difference. Okay, so I think we did happy and surprised. So maybe we'll just be like, oh, hey, what's up? Did I do that right? Is that how you act shy? <laughs> Is that what acting shy looks like? <laughs> Cece, what's yours? His happy demeanor makes you a little nervous, but he seems to mean well. He busts out a happy grin as if to try to put you at ease. The name is Jack. Don't wear it out. <laughs> you don't think you'll be trying to wear it out anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah, I like that mentality. Something about him is strange. You don't recognize him. He enters the empty checkout line. Yep, and then we did both of these already. We'll be like, ah, thanks. <gasps> Are those the strayed bars? Oh my god, I didn't even notice them the first time. Look at that, strayed bars. Gross. This one just says meat, but it has a whole bunch of leaves on it. All right. I just need to see if we're, if the park just leads to us going to Wade. I have to see. You head to the park feeling pretty jazzed about eating outside for the first time in a long time. The park looks so pretty in this lighting. You take a seat on the bench located near the entrance, opening up your soda and enjoying the cool late afternoon breeze. What are you going to do tonight? Get kidnapped by the dentist, probably? You aren't really sure. Your thoughts are cut off by the sound of police sirens. You notice that there's a good amount of police investigating the woods. Maybe it's time to start heading back to the motel. You head to the motel, walking along the same path you took to get there. You pass the gas station, making your turn towards the motel. It's called Shady Swallows. Heh, <laughs> swallows. <laughs> you head through the parking lot, making your way in the semi-dark towards your motel room. So I guess they found the dog there? Because if we weren't there to intercept him earlier on in the day, he would have just like killed the dog and then gotten a victim. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that girl, the girl, the, the green, the, she had green hair, right? The girl with the green hair? Maybe she got yanked from the park? You feel as though you're being watched. You start to walk faster. Maybe it's just your imagination? You decide to go with that until you hear footsteps behind you. Uh, we're just gonna keep, keep, keep pace. Keep going. You decide to keep walking to your motel room. Maybe they won't do anything if they think you don't know? You find your motel room door, reaching in your pocket for the key card. Hey, sweetheart, where do you think you're going? To my hotel room. You turn to look, seeing a large man standing there. Uh, bitch? 
Get away from me! You scream at him, but it only causes him to run at you. You cower, holding up your hands as he runs at you. Come on, babe, that won't scare me. He matches your shrill tone, mocking you. Fuck off. <laughs> he has a crowbar. That's the last thing you notice before he strikes you in the head. In the darkness, you can't comprehend what's happening. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, we, uh, we got bonked. <laughs> okay, I'm, I, I'm not thinking there would be anything different at this point. So I think I'm just going to go back and make some other choices. All right, we're back in the park. We're just going to look at the stupid clown mask, bitch. Someone is walking and you can't make out his face because he's wearing a strange mask. He's also holding what looks to be a crowbar. Oh my god. You run. Help! He rushes up to you, grabbing you with one large hand. He reeks of alcohol. You struggle. His grip is so strong. But there's no use. He hits you in the head. Alright. Fine. Try again. Okay, we're gonna be like, Hey, don't! <laughs> Please don't hurt me. I promise I have no money. He approaches, looking at you carefully. He's quite taller than you, and he's holding a crowbar in one hand. He also appears to have a duffel bag slung over his shoulder. Since when has he had a duffel bag? He reaches out, caressing your cheek with his large hand. Don't worry, I'll make everything better, baby. You find it surprisingly comforting. You feel as he pulls you close, pushing something against your face. It stinks. Stinky. Okay. We still don't have much of a heart, though, which is interesting. So, I don't know. Guess I'm just gonna start doing what I do best. Clicking on buttons until something new happens. Uh-oh. Okay, so remember, in the last playthrough, I was like, oh man, I accepted the food. It would have been really bad if we had escaped from our bonds and then he goes to let us go and then realizes that we had already gotten out. Well, he just found out that we already got out. <laughs> He runs his fingers along your wrists, pausing only when he notices the gap between the tape and your skin. He lets out a small laugh before pulling the tape off of your wrists. There we go. You grab it, pulling it into your lap before you begin to eat. Oh. I thought he was gonna have something to say about the fact that we were already out of it. I don't think we attacked him at this point. Will it work? No. <laughs> but will it get us an ending? Yes. You decide now will be a good time since his back is turned. You slowly get up, waiting for the right time before you run up and attack him. He whips around, your pencil embedding into his chest. Though you misjudged his height when you were both standing up. It's fucking huge! Yeah, this bitch is like 11 feet tall! You gotta aim high! He grabs you, hoisting you up by the shirt. Why? He growls as he throws you back against the wall. You wheeze as you hit the floor. He comes up. He reaches down, grabbing the plate. It didn't have to come to this. He kicks you hard in the stomach. You sag, sinking to the floor under his foot. He kicks you hard again, this time in the upper chest. You cough up blood. I really liked you, he shrieks before kicking you again and again. And you're gone. You got kicked out. God damn it. <laughs> okay, well look at that. We have eight endings left. We're, we're slowly but surely, we are getting through it. And he is very mean. <laughs> he is a mean man. Don't let him trick you into thinking he's cuddly and sweet. He is a mean man. <laughs> All right, let me know in the comments whether Strayed or Jack would win in a battle of the nicest serial killer because they're pretty, they're pretty tied. They're pretty tied in creepy cheeriness. And I hope I see you next time around. All of my exes were crazy. 
I'm sure you've heard that before.